Hey everybody, Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this cool heat distortion effect inside of Blender. So basically what we're going to be doing is creating this noise texture and animating it, and we're going to be using the compositor to create a displacement so that it looks like there's a heat distortion in the background of any scene or image that you choose. I'll also show you how to easily create a mask so that there's no distortion in the foreground of your scene and sort of fades into the background. So let's jump into Blender and get started. First thing we want to do is delete both the human and the lamp by pressing X. I'm going to switch over to Cycles Render and I'm going to select our camera and press Alt-G and Alt-R so that we can clear the location and rotation. And I'm going to go to side view and orthographic view and rotate this by negative 90 degrees. I'm also going to move it back on the y-axis by 10 units. Now we can press 0 on the numpad to go to camera view. And I'll add in a plane by pressing shift A. We can rotate this on the x-axis by 90 degrees. And I'll tab into edit mode and press S to scale this up so that the top edge of our plane is just outside the camera border. And I'll press S and X to scale it horizontally so that the side edge is just outside of the camera border as well. So that's looking pretty good. Now we can tab out of edit mode and open up a new window here. And we're going to switch this to the node editor. I'm going to give it a new material and press N to collapse that tab. And we're going to delete this diffuse shader and instead we're going to add in an emission shader. Let's plug that in. I'm going to press Shift Z to go to rendered view here. And we want to get a noise texture, so let's just add that in real quick. And if we add this in like that, we're getting some colors. But I want this to be a black and white texture, so we're actually going to use this factor value instead. And since I have the node Wrangler add-on enabled, I can press Ctrl T to easily add in the texture coordinate node as well as this mapping node. And I want to change this from generated to object, just so that it's much more even. And I think the, this noise is a little too big, so I'm going to increase the scale to about 10. And that's looking a lot better. But right now, this noise texture is a little too bright, and there's not a lot of contrast. So what I want to do is add in a gamma node. I'm going to increase this to about 2.5, so it's a little bit darker, and there's some more contrast. And that's pretty much it for the texture but we want to animate this so that the noise is moving along our camera. So to do that, I'm going to start on the first frame, and with this location information, I'm going to hover over it and press I to insert a keyframe. And I only want our animation to be out about 120 frames, so I'm just going to set that there. And I'm going to press Shift and the right arrow to go to our last frame. I'm going to change both the X and Y values to be 5 and insert another keyframe. Now if we press Alt-A we can view our animation. and You can see that it sort of starts off slow, speeds up, and as it approaches the end it slows down again. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a smooth animation. Whoops. Let's redo that. I don't know what happened there. But as I was saying, we're looking for a smooth animation at a constant speed. So to fix that, we're going to head over to the graph editor here. And with everything selected, we're going to press V in the vector. And now if we watch this, you can see that the noise texture is moving at a constant speed the whole time. So what we can do now is press Alt-A to stop that animation. I'm going to come over here and pick the file format that I want. I'm also going to pick the location where I want to save this. Just name this Heat Distortion. And I'm also going to decrease the samples to 1 since we're only using an emission shader and it really doesn't matter what the samples are because it's all going to look the same. It's just going to take longer to render if you have a higher amount of samples. And let's just render out one still frame for now and head over to the compositing layout. We'll check use nodes and backdrop and control up arrow to make it full screen. And I'm just going to move these back here. Press control shift and left click to add in a viewer node. And 
Now I'm going to add in this image that I found online of a road in a desert. So let's select that. And if we view that, you can see our image that we're using. I'm going to press Shift A to add in a displace node. And I'm going to plug in this texture into our vector here. And if I add in a value node, we can plug this into the X and Y sockets there. And if we're taking a look, you can see when this is set to zero, it's not doing anything. But as we increase this value, wherever there's white values in our texture, it's going to be displacing our texture. Wherever it's black, it's going to remain the same. So if we increase this to about five, you can sort of see the ripples that we're getting along these lines here. And with our texture animated, if we render the entire animation out, you would see that we're getting a heat distortion effect. But right now we're getting the distortion across the entire image, and typically when you see heat distortion, there's not much in the foreground, it's more in the background. So we're going to add in a mask real quick by pressing Shift A, Box Mask, and I'm going to set the Y value to 0, increase the X value like that, and I'm going to increase this Y value to about 0.4 maybe. And we're going to also blur this so that it's not a harsh mask. Let's switch it to Fast Gaussian, and for a Y we're going to switch it to 50. And if we add in a Mix node now, we can take this and plug it into our factor. And we can take our texture and plug it into the top socket and make the bottom black. If we view that real quick, you can see what it's doing. And now if we just plug this into the vector instead, and we take a look, you can see that we're not getting any distortion until up there. But if we had the original texture in, we're getting distortion everywhere. So that's much better. Now I'm just going to plug this into the composite node there. I'm going to exit the full screen mode by pressing Control and Down Arrow. And I'm just going to render this animation out. I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done rendering. Alright, so it's done rendering. Let's take a quick look at this animation. And it's looking pretty good. So we're getting the nice heat distortion in the background of our image here. And in the foreground, there's no heat distortion at all. And it slowly fades across right here. And if you think this is too fast or too slow, you can always adjust the values in the mapping node. So that you can use this effect for any scene or image that you have. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.